All right, class. So today's lesson, we're going to have a little bit of uh, some, some unique stuff we're going to watch here. We're going to learn a little bit about discipline and being able to dissect our own gameplay and learn from our mistakes. By doing that, we're going to watch at some of our fails from some of these ALGS competitions and looking back and just seeing what we could have done better in those games to really solidify our place in these good placements without getting caught off guard and just letting other teams take advantage of our laziness. So we talked a little bit about last week about you know some of the, some of the things that we can focus on to become a better player, what it takes to be a professional. So we're going to talk a little bit in depth about some of the things that you can do. And and Timmy, I know you're on the ground a lot in some of these games, so we're just going to give you a little bit of advice at how even when you're on your knees, you can be of some use to your teammates. So we'll kind of go into that in some of these games. But right now, we're going to talk about using your environment and things that you can do even when you're not active in the game to help your team and help your teammates. And we're just going to dive right into that with some of these clips we're about to watch. So in in this clip I'm in a situation where both my teammates go down kind of early we get a good amount of damage on one of the guys I'm able to knock them quickly to put myself in a pretty good situation I get another knock right after with a nice one clip I just want a big 1v1 and now I'm focused on using my teammates knockdown shields and what they're doing is they both made sure to get as close to me as possible without me having to tell them that they just knew instinctually this is a big advantage to use the knockdown shields and not only that we'll watch the rest of this real quick so I win the fight pretty handily in this situation. It was a 1v3. I took one opponent out early and both my teammates, they did come to me with their knockdown shields. It put the enemy team in an uncomfortable situation, but because I was playing height, I was able to use the terrain to block angles from the enemy. So they were forced in a situation where they had to swing up wide to try and get me. You saw one guy just land right on my head. I took the 1v1. The horizon wasn't in a position to help his teammate. His Q might've been down. So his ability was down, not able to help. So I win another 1v1. And now I'm in a situation where it's just me me versus one of the person. My teammates focus on crawling to me as close as possible so I can use their knockdown shields. I'm using the height as a way to block angles from the horizon. The horizon is forced to queue up and because the horizon queues up, I then use, I use the knockdown shield, do some good damage. I then back away from the knockdown shields and my teammates can then drop their knockdown shields so that the opponent can't use them. I do good opening damage. I put them in an uncomfortable situation and I win the last 1v1 to 1v3 my opponents. And these are things that, you know, I did well, my teammates did well and this is just a collective group effort regardless if I was the only one up my team did a great job at making sure that I was in the best position to win this fight oh hey we're gonna be talking a little bit about using your environment and no I'm not talking about like swamps to keep this duck alive I'm talking about in-game apex legends what you can do to help win fights so you can be as excited as this guy or you know you can go out and cost your team the game like this guy right here what we're gonna talk about is just how you can use terrain how you can use mountains rocks lines of sight to block vision from your opponents as well as using things like knockdown shields from a teammate who might have gotten knocked early to help you win the fight a little bit extra and just little ways to give yourself an advantage in these games that your opponents might not be thinking about or even just thinking about things like how many bullets that your opponent might have just used they might have to reload what point in the game is it are they going to have a fully kitted weapon or is it going to be a weapon they just found on the ground these are all things that are running through my mind at the highest level to help me decide on what the best decisions i can make to win these fights are and help give my team as much of an advantage as possible. So another part of the lesson today is going to be staying disciplined. You, we're talking about this because this is how your games are going to end and it's going to be your fault and you're going to get yelled at. It is so easy, especially in these comp games, for you to get distracted by things that are going on in the map. Someone that might be in front of you, someone that might be weak fighting across the map. You're too focused on getting kills in the game. They do not matter. Your whole game comes down to you staying alive as long as possible and figuring out what your threats are and what the biggest threats are around you. None of you are threatening, so y'all need to figure it out because right now, whatever. This is what's going to be important in your games. You got to focus on what is your biggest threat, what your opponents might be thinking, going through the motions of this team has to run in from zone. They're probably going to have to force fight us or they're going to Valkyl it out, do something like that. But that team behind you is going to be a bigger threat than the two teams that are safe in the buildings in front of you. And regardless of what's happening there, do not let that distract you from the biggest, most important thing on the map, which is the team that is coming in from behind you. We're going to talk about some of the clips that go on, some of the mistakes that my team makes. Sometimes you got to learn from these mistakes. That's how you figure it out. And we're going to also go back and talk about how you can constructively go back and learn from your mistakes regardless of how well you do in these games. 
for the third lesson, we're going to talk about maximizing your time. Now I'm going to write this out because this is an important one. So that is why you will not be sleeping in this class. You are going to get as much out of this as you possibly can. And what we're going to be talking about is basically using all the time you have in the game to come up with the best decisions that you can possibly make to get the best outcome. So many times teams, especially when we're talking about comp, and that's mostly what we're going to be focusing on here is maximizing your time because in ranked games, rarely do you ever come down to the end game. So basically what we're going to be focusing on is the fact that you might get into a spot where you're comfortable. You just feel, you know, we got, we're good for the next two zones. We don't have to worry about anything. No one's going to push us. No one's going to do this and that. What, what can you do to make it so that you're at least being productive in these games? You can talk about, okay, if the zone pulls here, we can, we can talk about, oh, we might need to fight this team and I might need to fight this team. Oh, uh, if zone pulls over here, what are we going to do? If, if a team ends up force fighting us, how are we going to take this fight? There's so many things that you can do in these games to maximize your time. And the biggest case for this is when you are not in zone. What can you do? It's not just, oh, we're just going to kind of run in and hope for the best. No, you could have three different backup plans. You should be rotating around as far as you can along these edges to see if you could possibly start a fight, to see if there's maybe a safer spot that you didn't realize. Don't just rush into a spot and be like, okay, we're good. That's the worst thing you can do because there is so much time. And we're going to talk specifically about one of these instances in one of our recent ALGS games where we did not do a good job of this. It's really easy to just let the game get too much in your head. There's too much going on that you forget about what you can do. And we're going to explain how you can do this the best of your ability without having the zone on your back. The map that we're going to look at is just, uh, it's actually the final game from when we clutched up and qualified. So we did really well this game, but there's always a couple things that we could do better. So we're going to dive into some of those things that we dissected after the game and figure out what we could have done to secure even more points in this game. So in this clip from the sixth game of the ALGS lobby, my team has already cleared out everything behind us. One thing that I always stress with my roster is just focusing on what's behind us because they are always forced into us instead of what's only in front of us because that's already secure and those teams most likely aren't going to come backwards. So right now we have a team that's in the Jurassic Cave that is trying to exit the cave to get out to push where we are at. So you just saw us kind of defend this whole area. We already cleared our back and now we're able to move up and go back to our safe spot, which we had already cleared out. So that's wonderful. So right now you can kind of see on the map that my whole team is lined up together. The Jurassic Cave is still in, so we know that they either have to wrap around through Jurassic to the other side of the map, or they have to try and maybe push us again from inside the tunnel and wrap into the zone. This is still a possibility, and I talk about this a lot with my roster. If you watch this game, you can hear it in the comms. It's, they can still wrap the storm, they can still do this, they can still do that. And for us, we kind of get too focused on what's in front of us now because they're in the zone. So we think they're not gonna wrap into the zone. They're not gonna come behind us. It's, it's safe and secure. But there's always that thought in the back of my head that they might still be able to make it into zone if we get too distracted, which is exactly what ends up happening here. I'm gonna zoom forward a little bit. We talk about what buildings are the safest. We talk about what's in front of us. We talk about what buildings is the safest we talk about what's in front of us we talk about what our next move is which is all great this is all planning for the future which is good communication this is a way for us to have a place set out so we're not just panicking when the zone starts moving again but while we're doing this we kind of seem to forget about the fact that there is still a team with its potential play behind us and this ends up kind of biting us in the butt here so right here, we have another game. This is actually from the first game of the ALGS finals lobby where my team was set up in a really strong position right outside the choke from the big mod area where you can kind of see on the mini map where I'm holding the tracks. There's a team playing under the tracks. You have Slurpee G who's watching the geyser hill up here. And we have Mac who's holding down the entire area that is close to the big mod. And we had this good form of communication. Everyone is watching important areas to see if another team might be entering our little kill zone to where we need to hold off our enemies because we are playing kind of on the edge of zone so if a team tries to push in we need to hold them off of that area to make our game easier on us what ends up happening is another situation where we get distracted by a weapon mac is in a situation where he doesn't have very good attachments on his weapon and this is something that hal actually used to yell all the time at and it, it, it does make a lot of sense when you are a professional player you don't need to have fully decked out weapons yes it helps but getting too distracted by weapons and ammo and all this stuff when you're in a situation where you need need to focus on what's a threat can end up causing a very uncomfortable situation for your team. What ends up happening is 
Mac wants to go get a golden R99 to trade out for his weapon that doesn't have the attachments that he wants. Him and Slurpee G end up leaving their spots. My main focus is the tracks right now. I say multiple times that my biggest threat is a team coming from where this respawn beacon is here at the dome because that is the main area that someone can flank me from because my whole focus is this side of the map. That focus was Mac side, was the dome side and big mod side and Slurpee G's was the hill to make sure no team was coming up from Geyser. We're gonna go in and and see exactly what happens because once again just like the re45 situation we drop a weapon we leave those lines of sight i can't watch everything at the same time and a team ends up running up on us getting a pick on albert Lelly, and then it puts us in an uncomfortable situation luckily we were able to salvage this game get out meet up and actually put ourselves in a good spot to win the game but we could have absolutely won this game and gotten a ton of kill points but instead we're put in an uncomfortable situation and ended up ruining our game early all for the wrong reasons of getting distracted so right here in the clip, I'm actually going to hide. You can kind of see the golden R99 that was pinged on the map. And as this is happening, another team was just rotating up from the big mod area. And because we took time to turn around and drop weapons, another team just pushed up through big mod. Albert Lully had to use his Newcastle ult to get back to Slurpee G. I'm too far spread out, so I can't get to my teammates because of how much separation was between us, which was great at first. But because we let that team move up on us, it ended up putting us in a bad spot. I got split up. Now I have to Valkyl out, hopefully to get to them in time. I'm really lucky I did not die here. But unfortunately, Albert Lully went down and now Slurpee G and I are a two man for the rest of the game. Slurpee G actually also died. But luckily enough, I'm able to land in a spot that's safe enough. I get my teammates banner, I go res him, and then him and I play duo the rest of the game. But this is just something that you need to focus on when it comes to looking at the bigger picture. The weapon was not that important. Holding our spot and making sure that we were safe as long as possible until it was 100% clear is the main goal for us. And we failed at that not once, but twice. And this is in back-to-back -back weeks. So as I previously mentioned, this is when the distraction comes in for my team. We get focused on a game drop that just came down and it was a very important weapon it's an re45 which is one of the best package weapons in the game right now especially for a team of two controller players on it and we get really distracted by this weapon that comes down albert Lully picks it up he ends up trying to drop it for slurpy g and he drops it on the ground they end up not being able to find the weapon and i have to go down there now to help them find the weapon and as i go down there to help them we get too distracted and stop focusing on the team that we're calling out that can still wrap in the zone. We completely space out for that second. And as soon as we try and go for this weapon, the other team comes right in the zone and takes a spot behind us that ends up making our game much more difficult. You hear Slurpee G right here asking, where did the weapon go? I'm focused on the teams in the buildings next to us. I drop down trying to help them find the weapon. We find the weapon right here, which is great. And then as soon as we get distracted by that, the other team runs in behind us, takes this rock behind us, and now we're in between two teams. If we were focused this entire time, we could have just shot this team that was coming out of the storm because they were already really weak from the zone. But now we're in a difficult situation because we're pinched in between two teams, and now we're put in a spot where we need to figure out how to make a play with the team behind us when our entire game plan was set up with not having to worry about that. What ends up happening is the other team behind us makes our game much more difficult, and we have to end up taking a big Big fight on them which we do win and it secures us some kill points but if we never had to worry about that we could have gotten the kills earlier or we could have never had to focus on them in the first place and potentially won this game so in this clip right here, we're gonna talk a little bit about expending all of our options and maximizing the time available to you to make the best decision possible. I think this is one thing that a lot of amateurs and even professionals have an issue of is not using the time to the fullest to make the best possible play, especially when you're in a position where you're not in the zone and you need to find your way into the next zone. A lot of people just go for the Hail Mary Valk ults, but we're not even playing Valk in this comp, so time is even more important to us than making the right play. Why did no one tell me my freaking collar was up? You guys are useless sometimes we'll go ahead and play this clip right here you can see we have two minutes of time right now we're on edge we're trying to decide what we want to do we're looking for the buildings maybe we can get into the buildings maybe we can't we're talking about it all we see that there's teams on the far hill from us so that's not really too big of an issue for us because that's way out of our range of something that we can even accomplish right now so right now we're looking around the corner we see teams possibly ballooning in trying to get some space on us now we see our biggest threat which is right here in front of us it's a team on the hill this is a very difficult position for us now 
now. That hill is one of the hardest hills in the game to push a team off of, especially when we have other people across the map who are now paying attention to us as we tried to enter. We're now down to a minute and a half. So we have a minute and a half to make a decision and we kind of just stall out at this point. We, we kind of just sit here and instead of maybe going down and going into Harvester to see if there's some sort of rotation we can make there, this is about as far as we go. We don't even take the time to look around the corner to see what's available to us. And we have a horizon. So if we drop down, we could always just horizon queue right back up and get back into the game and come back to where we're at. We're so tunneled on the team on the hill that that's our only play. We just, we keep saying that this is, we're just going to push them. We're just going to push them. We're going to do this without taking into consideration how hard of a push this is with how much focus we've already drawn onto us at this point in the game. So we are now down to 45 seconds. We've now wasted a minute and 20 seconds just kind of sitting here and only focusing on one play that we think we can make. And, you know, we've cleared our back. We've cleared everything around us. We talked about some of the things that we could do. I, I was bringing up ideas of possibly wrapping around the side close to tree side. There are some fights going on. There's always big fights on that side. And we're an edge team right here. So our main focus is just to get as many kill points as possible and possibly drop as big of a game as we possibly can. Instead, we put ourselves in a situation where we just let the clock run down and now zone is about to move and our only play is to push the team that was on the hill. We haven't even been able to take the time to see what kind of characters they have because every time we peek up, we get charge rifled across the map and we're just the main priority of focus for all the teams that are safe, unlike us at this point in time. So our main goal right here is we just say that we're gonna bangle our ult up, which isn't really too helpful for us because the Bangalore ult, as good as that ult is, it actually prevents us from being able to move forward because of all the rockets on the ground that would stun us if we ran into them. And the opposing team has a Bangalore, so they just counter Bangalore ult us. And now we're the main focus on every single team in the game. Albert Lully goes down right away. We're in a position where we can't really hold anything. We try and salvage something out of this, but we just end up getting pushed by the team who has all the cover from the rocks and our game ends right there. In this clip, we're gonna talk a little bit about a rank game and just kind of how it could be a lot of chaos in some of these rank games. So we're gonna talk a little bit about using the environment to your advantage in certain situations, using teammates communication to give yourself an advantage and really just putting yourself in the right spots to possibly fight back to back third parties because that does happen all the time in these rank games, especially on a map like Broken Moon with all those zip lines. So we'll dive right into this clip. We got a, we got a lot to talk about in this clip and actually dissect. So don't be afraid to go back, kind of slow down some of the stuff I'm talking about and watch it over again. Cause I really think that watching things back a couple times, you can always learn something new each time you do that. So right now in this clip, we actually didn't even know that there was a team near us, but we see a seer ult in the distance. So obviously there was some sort of fighting going down. We have a team in front of us. I'm shooting a Valkyrie, do a little bit of damage. As you can see, I kind of got hit for about 125 right there. So I need to put myself in a spot. I don't want to dive too far into the building because that doesn't allow my teammates to be in a position to look over me. But once I get the battery off, I decide to go right up top, get height on my opponent, which is going to put me in a good spot to really see a bigger view of the map. Now my teammates have drawn a lot of attention onto themselves. I'm able to just get behind the other team because I went on roof and went around them and we're able to just get three real quick squad wipes. So that was pretty easy. There's nothing really too much there, but because of us fighting, there's a third party that's going to get in on this fight. Slurp goes down, but I do a good amount of opening damage on the other team. So I know right there that at least one of them is out of the picture. And that puts me in a position to be able to res my teammate right away. If I waited too long to do that, there's a good chance that the enemy tries to push up on us and I'm not able to get that res and I'm in a disadvantageous situation in a a two on three but because i took advantage of the situation now we're fully up and we're focused on the enemy that was just right there trying to attack us so the enemy right here is a little scared i'm not really too sure why they backed off maybe they're just you know focused on getting as far into the game as possible but you know we don't really want to let that slide we we just want to aggress on our opponents but we're all staying within a close vicinity of each other to make sure that we can help i get a call out that there's someone weak on roof i take a lot of damage but once again i just need to make sure that i do not go down here i it is so important to just not give your opponents any kind of opening. I back up, I heal, I go back to roof, I jump into the smoke because I have a digital threat, which puts myself in a good situation here. The enemy decides to seer ult, and that's the most important thing right now, is denying that knowledge from my opponent is breaking that seer ult. You can do something with a bloodhound scan where you scan you can see the seer ult and you can just go straight for it, but denying that knowledge your opponent is huge when you're trying to end a fight quickly. So we end up taking out our opponents right there. I'm looking for some armor swaps and now we're in a situation where it's us versus one last team. The enemy came in, they took out my teammate Rambo. So now I'm in a 2v3 with Slurp. I'm able to drop, I'm able to knock one opponent quickly, help Slurp out, 
and now I'm in a situation right here where it's a one-on-one. -on -one. I focus on healing up because I'm obviously very weak. I have like 60 health total. Playing your teammates knockdown shields is one of the biggest things you can do. So I'm playing my teammates knockdown shield. He goes down. So now I'm just in a one-on-one -on -one, and I'm using my opponent's knockdown shield actually as cover. And now that no, he's, I can no longer use my opponent knockdown shield, I decide to finish my opponent so that my enemy can't do that. I grab the armor swap off of that guy after he does damage to me. He probably has to reload. I pick up the armor swap and win the 1v1 to win the game. So right here in this entire clip, I'm just going to kind of go back. I don't really need to just rewind the clip or anything. But at the end of this game, me and Slurp are in a 2v3. So I get hit for a lot of damage. I know the opponent's going to look to finish it because they know that one of us is dead. The guy dropped off the roof. Because he dropped off the roof, he pretty much broke his ankles. He just kind of, you know, went down to the ground. And because of that, I was able to use that slow that he was hit with. And I was able to one clip him. I didn't finish him right away because I was so pretty healthy. I decided to run to my teammate Slurp. I didn't want to leave him out to dry because he was in a fight. So I chose to help him right away. We downed another. He went down because of that. So now I'm in a one-on-one. -on -one. I focus on using the environment, which is using my teammates knockdown shield to try and get as much time as I can to get healthy. He dies. So now I have to leave that spot. I can't go for an armor swap on him because I have to grab the banner. It's too risky. I wrap around the outside. I see my opponent. I see the opponent's knockdown shield. I use it originally for some cover. After I no longer can use it for cover, I finish that opponent just in case I might need an armor swap. I don't want to leave that guy up because he can not only give information to his teammate about where I'm at, but his teammate might be able to use that for his advantage instead of me. So I finish him. The opponent wraps around the outside, gets some good damage on me. I get a quick armor swap. I'm fully healthy and I take a one-on-one -on -one to win the game and help secure the dub for my team. So to recap a little bit about our three points right here, we're going to talk first about using your environment. Now, this is going to be, you know, we could talk about this in, in, in just when it comes to, to being with a woman, you know, you want to make sure that the, the mood is set right. You know, you want to make sure you have an, a complete understanding of everything that's going on. You can dim the lights a little bit, light some candles or whatever. It's Billy, just because you've never been to something before, you can use your imagination, all right? You've used it quite a few times, I'm sure. You know, th this is all about just finding out the best way to use the map or the environment in the best way possible to come out on top of, uh, above your opponents. All right, now that we've gone through everything, We've maximized our time, and unfortunately for you guys, I don't get paid overtime for this, so get the hell out of here. I'm done. All right, guys. It's been a rough first two weeks, so I'm going to keep it real with you. We have a parent-teacher conference coming up here really soon. Yeah, I'd be surprised too, because you, uh, you, listen, buddy, you got some work to do, okay? But we're moving forward. I think we're seeing some progress. I don't know why you're so excited. Uh, I mean, you, you, are doing, you are doing pretty well, but I don't think anyone, any, anyone in this classroom right now should be too excited about a parent-teacher conference because, you know, you're kind of all forced in here in the first place because you know, you, you're, you're playing enough video games at home. Listen, Billy, I, I hope I didn't bother you too much with that whole woman comment. Listen, you know, some people just take a little longer to get into that situation than others, and, you know, if you need someone to talk to, find one of your other classmates because that's just not uncomfortable for me. I'm not going to lie. How, how are you so happy all the time? I don't want to be here all the time. I, I, I really I really don't understand. You must have just never had someone like Hell yell at you, huh? I, I, I appreciate the enthusiasm you bring to the classroom, but, you know, not everyone can be happy all the time. <sighs> Nora, how did we get put in this situation? I just, I graduated college. I just got thrown right into this job of teaching undergrad kids how to play video games i don't even know if they want to be here we've been through so much together i've been top professional for over a decade at this point how how, how am i stuck here with a bunch of bronze idiots I, I i truly don't get it class starts in like three minutes and and i don't know if i can continue with this nora i really don't we'll get through this together though at least we have each other thank you nora you've been great Numbers on the screen that I don't here. care if it's grammatically correct. Be 